Good afternoon. I am Dr. John Nordling at Concordia Theological Seminary, and I teach New Testament in the Department of Exegetical Theology. And I welcome you. Uh, this is a late winter uh, afternoon, um, early in Lent. So uh, this is a text uh, that you're studying today at the very end of Easter when things will be quite different. And if you were watching last week, I need not repeat what I said then. Um, uh, I, we're going to start with the collect of the day and then go from there into the text. So we have the collect uh, before us, and uh, let, us, let us pray uh, together. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the Spirit of truth, whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So that's the prayer that you will be praying um, for the collect of the day. And first, uh, 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 the, the way the prayer begins, O King of glory, Lord of hosts. Um, now, this, of course, could be the Father, but I would encourage you to think maybe that it's talking here about the Son, uh, Christ the Son, who is the King of glory, and, and, and Yahweh of hosts, uh, that idea from the Old Testament. And then we have um, a very strong uh, clue as to something that happened this past week, and that's uplifted in triumph far above all heavens. And that, of course, um, is talking about Ascension Day, which has happened this past Thursday for you. We've had uh, the Ascension of our Lord, and I hope that's a service that you can uh, rejoice in with your people. When I was a pastor in Chicago, that was a service that I brought back in after many years of, of disuse. But uh, it's, it's actually absolutely essential to understanding uh, liturgically what's going on and the seventh Sunday in Easter, which is the last Sunday, and the next Sunday is, of course, going to be Pentecost. So once again, we have this forward-looking aspect toward Pentecost and uh, what will be delivered there. So uplifted in triumph above all heavens, leave us not without consolation. And remember last Sunday he said, uh, I shall not leave you as orphans. Okay, and I think the church is supposed to kind of remember that. Here it's without consolation. Uh, uh, consolatio is really the same as the Greek paraklesis, right? And the par paraclete, which is given in at Pentecost. And paraklesis often has to do with exhortation or encouragement. In fact, I, I begin to think lately that um, many of the times, at least when Paul is using it, he may be thinking about the type of encouragement and consolation that happens in preaching. Certainly there is an element of preaching that works this way, that it's not just exhortation, do this or that, you know, sanctification, if you will, but it, it, it is an encouraging sermon, and with the gospel even. So without consolation, but send us the spirit of truth. This is a prayer, of course, it's going to be um, uh, fulfilled next Sunday, whom you promised from the Father. We know that he has been promised through the Father by um, the, the last Sunday and, uh, and this one. So that's probably enough on that. Let's go now to the text itself. And uh, I have my friends here keeping time. Let me just put that away. And um, they'll let me know when we get to 15 minutes, and then I won't go any further than 20 minutes, I promise. Now, this text is just a little bit longer. And it's from John 17, 1 to 11. And remember... John 17 is the high priestly prayer of Jesus. Um, and this is from the tail end of, the, uh, of the, the final discourse that Jesus gives 
in John's Gospel, John 13 to 17. So this is the end of it where he prays directly for his church on earth. And you see that given in this first verse. It's kind of a frame. Um, uh, Jesus uh, said these things. This tauta, I think, is looking backwards to uh, his earlier um, uh, departure discourse. And then you have kai eparas tus ophthalmus autu eis ton uranon ethan. And having lifted up his eyes, okay, so it's a, it's a, it's a liturgical gesture. Um, what is that called? Homo orons. He raised his eyes up into heaven. That's what is going on here. Uh, he said, okay, and this saying then is the prayer that now commences. So it's just kind of a frame to orient you um, in, uh, to kind of the next unit in the gospel. Now, it begins pater in the vocative. Um, you have this pater here, and there's a number of them here. The text is so long, I'm going to have to scroll down. Also in verse 5, uh, pater there, again in the vocative. And then can you scroll down to the very last verse, John? Can you do that quickly for me? Okay, and then you have, uh, ah, get rid of that. Okay, uh, why am I not seeing it here? Um, oh, there it is. Okay, and then it commences with a Holy Father. So these are all related. Okay, scroll back up uh, again. So th that's kind of a, a, a something that, uh, now I lost it, but you saw it earlier. Uh, three paters in the vocative, um, and so it's an, a, a direct address of, of the second person of the Trinity to the first person of the Trinity. And indeed, if you want to go in this way, it's an inner Trinitarian conversation is what we're privy to here on earth that the church has um, looking ahead to Pentecost and the gift of the Spirit. So the passage is very Trinitarian, um, especially Binitarian between Christ and the Father. And then the Spirit, of course, is the one that gives us the heart as we prayed in the, in the Collex, that we would grasp these great truths and get uh, from them what our Lord gives. So um, your sermon uh, aids in this way. Okay, uh, so he says, Father... Um, Eleluthen hehora, the time has come, the hour has come. So that, of course, is the hour of Jesus' uh, betrayal, arrest, uh, crucifixion. Um, but beyond that, um, his uh, rest in the tomb and his glorious resurrection. Um, uh, glorify uh, your son. Daxasan su ton huion hina ha huios daxase sa. So daxase sa. Lots of sa 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 there. Sibilants in there. So glorify thy son in order that the son may glorify thee. So it's, a, it's again a binitarian relationship, a conversation between Christ the Son and God the Father. Uh, very much so. Um, so one of the words that you want to look at in this section is uh, doxa, doxase, and doxazo. That's one of the words, glory. I haven't worked it out. That's a tougher word than you realize. I'm working on it right now in Philippians. I haven't figured it out yet. I don't know if I ever will. And in, in, Indeed, it kind of transcends what we mere mortals can can think, even on the basis of the word, but glorify thy son in order that the son may glorify thee. Okay? So it's a prayer that God the Father would glorify Jesus uh, on earth in his ministry, through the preaching office, through the catechesis of the church, through your ministry as pastor, through the work of your congregation in the community that God has set you 
all of these things, I think, enter in here in order that the Son may glorify thee. The, 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 the way the world knows who the true God is, is through the Son. They don't, the true God is not known uh, in Islam or Allah or Hinduism or these other false religions. I'm sorry if that's offensive, but that's how, it, how the scripture uh, pictures it. Just as thou hast given authority to him, passe sarcos, over all flesh. Probably an objective genitive. Now, so I've got doxa, do, doxa doxes. Another word that you want to watch here is uh, uh, edokos. If I can get this to write. Okay, the aorist from didomi. Uh, thou didst give. And then also, dedokos. Okay, I don't know how many times this occurs. This is the perfect. So this is the aorist, and this is the perfect. But it's like um, the author of John's Gospel is playing on that. Okay, that you gave, uh, historical, or thou hast given in the past and are still given now. Remember Veltz's focus on connection uh, that, that he says. So just as you gave him, namely the Son, uh, authority over all flesh in order that pan ha dedokas auto, all that thou hast given to him, he may give to them, namely zoen ionion, life everlasting. That passage was also, that, that way of putting it was also in last Sunday in his very Johannine John 3.16, life everlasting. Okay, uh, and this is the everlasting life, he Ionios Zoane, in order that, eh, let's see if we got, that they may know you as the only true God, okay, that's talking about the Father now, okay, the only true God, and, and now, now this is very tricky, it's not hard at all, but uh, just getting your Greek back up to speed, we got a relative pronoun that precedes uh, its antecedent, and Jesus Christ whom thou didst send. See how that works very nicely? And Jesus Christ, whom you did send. So Jesus is the apostle of the Father, okay? Just as the disciples are to be the, the apostles of Jesus Christ. So you have this um, apostolicity going on in the, in the Trinitarian relationship. Uh, verse 4, uh, very emphatic, ego. I, for my part, glorified thee, se, okay, upon earth, epitaskes. Every time I see that, I think of the Lord's Prayer very much, okay. Um, having completed telo, teleosas, uh, nominative singular masculine aorist active participle from teleao, having completed the task which... Thou hast given to me. See the dedokos again? What I told you about before. Thou hast given to me in the past and still is given to me now. Jesus is not stuck away in heaven. He is here on earth through the preaching office of the church, through the lively ministry of the pastor, equipped with the means of grace. That's how you got to look at it and think about it and preach it for all it's worth, okay? That makes the whole thing come alive. It just busts out with power. Whom thou hast given to me in order that, uh, uh, in order that I may do it, okay? Uh, purpose clause. And now glorify me, thou. See how, that, how the Greek puts it? John, is this coming up when I hold the cursor over it? Okay. And see how they put the sew there? And now thou, O Father, vocative, glorify me, um, para se auto. Uh, 
and how do you do these uh, prepositions? I put them in red, para se auto, before thyself. Um, uh, some of this you really can't get into English. It's a, okay, I've got some time, uh, my time is running down, so much abundance and so little time. But it's a relationship, I would say, that the Son enjoys before the Father in heaven, before thyself. Then we have this dative, by means of that glory with which I had before the world existed parasoi. That takes us back to eternity on the other side of creation. The Son has always been with the Father. That's what uh, this is uh, showing us. Now, can you um, scroll up slightly? Uh, so, um, I uh, manifested your name uh, to the people, tois anthropois, whom thou didst give to me, there's your aorist again, from uh, the world. Uh, keep going, C can you uh, scroll up here? A little bit more. Now, here's a dative that you haven't seen if you were taught by me. Whoops, what? I don't want that. How do I get rid of that? Okay, I want the black, yeah. Okay, so this soy is something that you're not going to know if you were trained on belts. Um, this is what's known as a possessive dative. They were yours. They were to thee. Okay, it's a possessive dative. Veltz never talks about it at all. Um, they, were, they were yours, and you didst give them to me, and thy word they are. No, wait a minute. And, and they have kept thy word. And we talked about Tereo last Sunday, keeping uh, God's word. Now they know, now they have known that Pantahasodetakasmoi, that all the things as much as thou hast given to me from you, I could have added this one with these, right? They, they kind of run together. I just overlooked that one, are, are from you. Because the words which thou hast given to me, I have given to them. Okay? So we talked about things and uh, commandments and doctrines uh, and sacraments. These are the things that are meant, I believe. Um, and they receive them and they know truly that uh, I have come out from thee, para su. Okay, see how this all kind of fits together? Um, and they believed that you did send me. So this idea that Jesus is the apostle of the Father is repeated. Now, how much time do I have? Okay, so I got two minutes. So we're blasting through this. I ask on their behalf, not for the world do I ask. Okay, so erotao. Um, uh, I've done a little work on this, and erotema is one of the words that's used for prayer in the New Testament church. So he's more than just asking, but it's the prayer that Jesus prays for the life of his church everlastingly. And our miserable worship and our terrible prayer lives <laughs> hardly do justice as they reflect that of Jesus everlasting and holy and perfect ministry, I think that's the way to look at it. So I uh, pray for them, namely the ones that you have given me, not for the world, do I ask, but for those whom dedokosmoi, there it is again, those whom thou give, gave me in the past and still give me now because, here's that possessive dative again, they are to thee, they are thine. See the possessive dative? That's what this is. Dative of possession. Learn that construction. And ta emma panta sa esten, and the all my things are thine, and ta sa emma, and thy things are mine, and uh, I have been glorified in them. Now, is this end, is that talking about the things? Is it talking about word and sacrament? possibly, or is it talking about the believers that 
the ones for whom Jesus is praying. It could go both ways. It's, it's intentionally ambiguous. There's an abundance to scripture that we can't get to the bottom of. And no longer am I in the world, uh, yet they are in the world. Okay, Jesus well knows uh, the difficulties that his believers face here, uh, the difficulties of pastors who preach to an indifferent and, and empty congregations where the people should pack the sa sanctuary for word and sacrament. Jesus knows this. Don't think he doesn't. That's what he's saying here. And I am coming to you. Another one of these, uh, these uh, prepositional phrases. Holy Father, Keep them in my, in thy name, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, by means of which you gave them to me in order that they may be one as we are one. Namely, we, Father and Son, are one. It's Trinitarian, okay? This is Binitarian to be sure, but Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are part of the, of the, of the, of the Holy Trinity. Um, and Trinity is coming up right after Pentecost. All right, um, I blew, it through, blew through this quickly and uh, got a little carried away a couple times, but it's a glorious text. I just pray that you just lose yourself in the text and in your people Open your people's ears to these wonderful promises that Jesus gives his church uh, in this and, 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 and train them to look ahead into the even greater glories of Pentecost, which awaits you next Sunday. Thank you.